In chapter 14, we're really heading for the end of Mark's story. And uh, because Bethany has been Jesus' base of operations, but it seems like on Thursday night, he comes into the city and he, and he doesn't leave it. It seems that the location of the house that Jesus ate his last supper in, his Passover meal, uh, was on Mount Zion, um, just a little bit further south than Herod's temple where Pilate would have taken up residence at this time. Archaeologically speaking, it's not a rock solid thing, but it's a traditional location. And one of the interesting ways the archaeologists talk about this is by looking at a, a mosaic map that's in the floor of a church in, in Medaba. Uh, in, in present-day Jordan. This mosaic map was used by ancient pilgrims as they came from elsewhere in Europe and elsewhere. They'd arrive at Medaba and look at the map and it'd give them some sort of guidance as to the kind of things they need to see. Now, on this uh, map in Medaba, um, you can see Jerusalem uh, there in, in, in pictorial form. And there's a, a particular structure on Mount Zion, which is one of the things that indicates to the archaeologists that uh, there was a place that was revered here. Then through discussion about what that means and drawing through in other sources, um, it seems like this might be the place uh, that the Last Supper could have been held. Passover was a very, very important festival. It, it, it was an annual festival. Where, the, where Jewish families got together and they um, sacrificed a Passover lamb, ate it together and had bitter herbs, and they had, a, they had a, a, a customary way of eating a meal with various prayers and blessings said during, out, during the meal. What the Passover, the annual Passover festival was doing was remembering an event. And the event was way back at the beginning of Israel's history when their people came out of Egypt. Uh, they were slaves in Egypt and they were liberated by God, saved by God, and that's when they became the nation Israel. And uh, as part of God's deliverance from slavery in Egypt, there was a series of plagues, and then there was a final plague where the firstborn of every house died, except for the houses that uh, had sprinkled the blood of a lamb over their doorpost. And uh, because the uh, killing angel or the wrath of God passed over uh, the houses that had this blood on the doorpost, this is how you get the name Passover. Now when Jesus and his friends celebrated the Passover, it's interesting, for centuries, the Passover festival had a symbolic meaning that looked back uh, to the first salvation rescue from Egypt. Uh, when Jesus uh, stood up to uh, do the normal rituals and prayers and blessings, he changed the meaning of what was happening. And instead of directing the, the, his disciples minds back to the first deliverance of God, uh, he directed their minds forward to his own death which was coming up the next day uh, and, he, and he interpreted his death in the light of the Passover and, you, and, you, and he sort of realised that um, what he's saying is that this Passover festival celebrated for centuries was really looking forward to the great act of good deliverance which was about to take place through his death when he dies as a ransom for many.